Good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to this service of evening prayer from our family garden here in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. I'm pleased to present this worship service this evening as an outreach ministry of the Church of the Ascension here in London. This is Friday, the 25th day of June. Christmas is Christmas Day is just six months away, that midpoint in our time of celebration. I'm glad you can be here with me for evening prayer tonight, and I encourage and invite you to bring your prayer intentions to our time together. In terms of things being observed on this day, this, for you fans of the Fab Four, is Global Beatles Day. The Beatles have sold more than 600 million record albums across the world. They had more number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100 chart than any other band, with 20 number one hits. This date was selected as Global Beatles Day because it was on the same date, the 25th of June, in 1967, that BBC television presented the program Our World. It was broadcast to a global audience. It was, in fact, the first global satellite program. It featured 19 musical acts from 19 different countries. And the Beatles were one of those groups featured, and they sang their classic, All You Need Is Love. So today is a day to remember the Beatles, their magnificent music, certainly very much the music of my generation and perhaps your generation music that is still alive and strong to this day and so many of their pieces have actually been taken over into classical format uh, the local orchestra london used to do jeans and classics nights and sometimes they would feature beatles music set to a more classical genre of music this is, in addition today, Goat Cheese Day, which I very much like. Take your dog to work a day, although with so many people working from home now, it's more here comes your dog into the camera view again now. I've noticed in Zoom meetings in which I've taken part that you hear dogs barking in the distance, uh, cats wandering into camera view, sometimes dogs coming in, jumping up on the uh, person's lap, lots of fun and it is strawberry parfait day strawberries are in season now in this part of ontario and few things are as fresh and relaxing as a nice fresh juicy strawberry so this is the time this is a season to enjoy a strawberry parfait now we will go to evening prayer oh lord i call to you come to me quickly hear my voice when i cry to you let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place, and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. We go now to the psalm appointed in our daily lectionary for today, and that is Psalm 107, a long psalm, and we are assigned to read 32 verses of the psalm, a psalm that uh, goes over some of the history of God's love for and dealing with God's people. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the land of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert waste. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, 
and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty, and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deep gloom, bound fast in misery and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God, and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he humbled their spirits with hard labor. They stumbled, and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them out of darkness and deep gloom, and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and breaks in two the iron bars. Some were fools, and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food, and drew, dear, drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper, and quieted the waves of the sea. They were glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and let the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the council of the elders. In the collect with this psalm, O God, the divine seeker, you are light to the lost, bread to the hungry, deliverance to the captive, healing to the sick, eternal vision to the dying, and harbor to every soul in peril. Gather the wanderers from every corner of the world into the community of your mercy and grace, that we may eternally praise you for our salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue now with our scripture reading. We are reading in the book of Acts. Today we continue from where we were yesterday in chapter 7. And today we will be reading verses 17 to 29. Still part of Stephen's defense in front of the council. And Stephen is giving them a lesson in biblical history, in God's salvation love for God's people. And Stephen is, in essence, arguing for his life. And so we see what St. Luke has to tell us now in the seventh chapter of Acts. And Stephen says, But as the time drew near for the fulfillment of the promise that God had made to Abraham, our people in Egypt increased and multiplied, until another king, who had not known Joseph, ruled over Egypt. He dealt craftily with our race and forced our ancestors to abandon their infants so that they would die. At this time Moses was born, and he was beautiful before God. For three months he was brought up in his father's house, and when he was abandoned, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. So Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was powerful in his words and deeds. When he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his relatives, the Israelites. When he saw one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man, and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his kinsfolk would understand that God through him was rescuing them. But though they did not understand, the next day he came to some of them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Man, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging, wronging his neighbor pushed Moses aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When he heard this, Moses fled and became a resident alien in the land of Midian, 
There he became the father of two sons. Now when he was forty years old, now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in the form of a burning, the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he approached to look, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses began to tremble, tremble and did not dare look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the mistreatment of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I have come down to rescue them. Come now, I will send you to Egypt. And I actually read a little farther than I needed to, but that's good. We'll catch up with it again tomorrow. Uh, this is a, a beautifully strong message. As we said in yesterday's devotions, Stephen knew his biblical history quite well. And he is laying this out to the council that has been charging him with false charges of blasphemy. He's laying this out before them in an effort to show them how all of this leads to the birth, the life, the death on the cross, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is schooling them in matters of faith. But as we will soon see, they do not want to listen. They considered what Stephen was saying as well thought out and as well spoken as it was as being only so much gibberish. Stephen is a model of faith for us. Stephen was willing and did give his life in testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Stephen is recognized as the first Christian martyr. And remember, as we have said, in Greek, the word martus means both martyr and witness. And through his words, through his actions, through his life and death, Stephen witnessed to his faith and to the love he had for the Lord Jesus Christ. All for us to know and to keep in mind on our spiritual journey. How well do we know scripture? How closely can we follow it? What kind of testimony can we give to others as to what the Lord Jesus has meant and done in our lives? What stories can we tell of how faith became truly active in our lives? How we felt closer than ever to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let Stephen be a model of witness of the faith in his martyrdom, in his love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I'd like to look back a little bit on this June the 25th to a few things that have happened in history and see what we might learn from them. On this day, the 25th of June, in 1115, in an isolated valley in Champagne, France, St. Bernard founded the famed monastery at Clarival. We give thanks for the life of monastic communities, for those who live and serve in those communities, and for those who grow in faith through such communities. And specifically, we're thankful for the life and witness of Bernard of Clairvaux. In 1530, on this date, the Augsburg Confession was brought down, wherein Germany's Protestant princes forced Holy Roman Emperor Charles V to hear their confession of faith. And in 1678, on this day, Venetian Alina Conaro Piscopio was awarded a Doctor of Philosophy from the University of Padua. She was the first woman to receive a university doctoral degree or PhD. We give thanks for all those women who led the way into study that today 
men and women are approaching near equal opportunities in our colleges and universities. In 1876, on this date, the Battle of Little Bighorn took place. The U.S. 7th Calvary, Calvary Cavalry, always confuse those words, the 7th U.S. Cavalry, under Brevet Major General George Armstrong Custer, was wiped out by the Sioux and Cheyenne warriors led by Chiefs Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull in what has become known famously as Custer's Last Stand. We pray for peace between those original inhabitants of the land and those settlers who came afterward. And especially in this time when more and more hidden, unmarked graves are being discovered of our indigenous people. We wish for ways of reconciliation and justice for all. And may God grant us the ability to reach for and to achieve these goals. Writer George Orwell was born on this date in 1903. His works include Animal Farm in 1984. The writings of George Orwell pictured what a totalitarian state might be like and how individual rights and freedoms were taken away in such states. Those books are for us to read and learn that totalitarianism might never again raise its ugly head among us. A little musical interlude now in 1938 on this date, the number one song on the hit parade was A Tisket A Tasket by Ella Fitzgerald. And we continue to give thanks for popular music. That was the music of my parents. Uh, I am thankful that my father gave me a love of that music, especially big band music. And A Tisket A Tasket, I would count as a favorite song. In 1950, on this 25th of June, North Korea invaded South Korea in what marked the beginning of the Korean War. There's not really peace yet on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, there was an armistice of sorts signed, but much more simply a cessation of hostilities than any kind of an agreement. There is still a demilitarized zone and no person's land separating the two countries. There have been limited attempts to communicate back and forth, but the two sides are so very distrusting of one another. We pray that it might be possible for the people of the Korea, of Korea, the Korean Peninsula, to be together one more time. In 1978, on this 25th of June, the first use of the rainbow flag as a symbol of gay pride took place in a march in San Francisco when one Gilbert Baker took a rainbow flag and said that was his sign of gay pride. Now, rainbow flags seem to be almost everywhere. Uh, Schools and cities are flying those flags. Some churches are flying those flags as we seek to be inclusive and to welcome all people to our faith groups, regardless of their sexual orientation. This would normally be Gay Pride Weekend in Toronto. It still will be, but under a very virtual basis. It is, has become, for Toronto, such an amazing tourist draw Uh, over the years. And a death of note, oceanographer, explorer, and scientist Jacques Cousteau died of a heart attack on this date in 1997 at the age of 87. I've just loved his programs about undersea life, and perhaps you have too. And I'm thankful for people like Jacques Cousteau, who opened up the world for us and to us. And another death of note, the King of Pop, as he was known, Michael Jackson, died on this date of a cardiac arrest induced by an overdose of the prescription drug Propofol at the age of 50 on this date in 2009. 
Michael Jackson gave us some very beautiful music, and it's sad that his life ended so early. We offer prayers of remembrance and prayers of consolation for those who miss him so very much. We now want to go to our prayers of the evening. Let us, by prayer and intercession, with thanksgiving, make a request known to God. Our prayer response, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice, and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honoring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women, and children. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love, and service. We pray for taught our bishop and for the life of our parish community. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this local community and all local communities and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity, and we give thanks for all that reveals your loveliness. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful, and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care, and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship, and for all that enriches our daily lives. And we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. To you, O Lord. And now we pause for a moment of silence in which we bring our own prayers forth. And the collect for this week, O God, our defender, storms range about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us from all unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now each of us, in our own language, can offer up that prayer our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love and those that you would pray for today and always. Amen. This weekend I am involved in uh, the Lutheran Synod. Uh, tomorrow's service on Saturday will be probably somewhat later because I will be in sessions until supper hour tomorrow. Uh, I hope I can get this one out on time today. It's actually being recorded uh, the night before. Uh, so that uh, I'm sure it's done because sessions go tomorrow except for meal breaks from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I should be well worn out, but I do look forward to it. Uh, a chance to, uh, to see some friends, to participate uh, in the worship and uh, in fellowship. Thank you again for joining with us. Go now in peace. 
May the God of peace go with you. Amen.